All right, Brakati Hava, Brakati Hava Shah, Brakati Hava, Brakati Hava Shah, Brakati Hava, Brakati Hava Shah. Kaula Yemi Hava, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, the Bahanas, the Apostles, the Elders, Bishops, the Great Millstone, who rule well over the flock of Israel. Shalom and salutation to you, brothers, are here pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the elect, Haki, Mahakwa, Scott Israelites, Israelite foreigners. I'm about to start this video. Is that a fine? All right, so I'm just going to play a few videos dealing with um, the persistent uh, matters uh, leading up to World War Three and um, the annihilation of Babylon, the mystery Babylon, America, and the scriptures according to prophecy and um, the judgments to come and how everything of current events just correlates with what we've been saying through the spirit, uh, starting with our apostles, uh, elders, um, concerning end time prophecy and the fact that Yahweh Shah is returning. We're right around the corner from that moment. Um, in, in, in order to really um, present your body as a living sacrifice and do the things that are acceptable and pleasing unto the Lord, you have to carry a cross. You have to you know, put yourself in a position of difficulty, which is a burden. And the reference that I uh, use, use or the reference that comes to mind for this video was Joseph of Arimathea, who was a considerably rich man during the time of Yahweh Shah. However, he stopped what he was doing to help Yahweh Shah carry that cross while he was being persecuted and afflicted. He didn't just watch. And so the brotherhood, you know, the elect of Yahweh Shah, Shah, we are to carry our cross and bear the burdens. The Lord said, you know, my burden is light. So, but he's still, you know, looking for those laborers who are um, going to do his, his um, uh, the labors are few, but the harvest is, is plenty, right? So he's looking for those laborers that's going to do that work and put their hand to the plow without taking it off so that um, the Lord's work can be done, all right? Which is the preaching of this word. Um, so the script said, you know, by the foolish, foolishness of preaching, we um, please, it pleases the most high. So here's an article. Well, it's in English. It's dealing with um, everything going on over there in Russia um, concerning um, end time prophecy. And then we're going to check that out, check another one out, and then we're going to go right into precepts. Shalom. Interesting. Again today, the Russian papers devote plenty of column space to the U.S. House of Representatives vote in favor of more U.S. aid for Ukraine. There were lots of articles yesterday, again today, which suggests that this vote really has struck a raw nerve in Moscow. Several papers today focus on House Speaker Mike Johnson and ask, like Komsomolske Pravda does, why did Speaker Johnson make a U-turn? In other words, why did he switch to actively supporting the aid package? Komsomolske Pravda says that Mike Johnson behaved like a total scatterbrain, not a hardened politician. Moskovsky Komsomolets suggests that for months he'd been brainwashed by figures like CIA director William Burns. The look of a traitor. Again, language like this shows just how irritated Moscow is, or at the very least, how disappointed it is by the outcome of the vote. Komsomolets continues, For observers in Moscow, it had been a pleasant surprise when American funding for Ukraine stopped. The only way to view what's happening now is that all pleasant surprises for Russia that come from the banks of the Potomac River can only be temporary and fleeting. The paper concludes that America has no intention of giving way to Russia in Ukraine. Russia itself will have to force the other side to make concessions on the battlefield, not in the corridors of power in Washington. And this article in the same paper advises how Russia should react if America supplies Ukraine with Atakum's long-range missiles as part of the aid package. The delivery of these missiles to their launch positions should be made as hard as possible by preemptive strikes on storage facilities and silos. And it would be good to supply Russian missiles to those countries that for some reason don't like Washington. Similar thoughts in today's Izvestia. A security analyst tells the paper, the US has already spent a colossal amount of force, money and time supporting Kiev and is unlikely to surrender its strategic asset. Only the total defeat of the Ukrainian army will end support for Ukraine. So what this video is basically referring to is a uh, new support uh, for Ukraine in, bill, in a bill that America just passed in what it did was uh, exacerbate the situation going over there in Russia between Ukraine and Russia, that war, and which is a proxy war of America and versus Russia, and or NATO versus Russia, or rather. Um, it's a proxy to the Third World's War. And so America just passed that bill. I have the 
picture here, the video here, that. On this vote, the yeas are 80, the nays are 19, three-fifths of the senators duly chosen and sworn having voted in the affirmative, the motion is agreed to. Cloture having been invoked, the motion to refer and the amendments pending thereto fall. All right, so that's dealing with how the fact that America has now allowed aid to go more into Ukraine to fund for these attack on missiles. And so Russia is taking this, they got to take a bigger stance because Washington's not hearing it. So now it's realizing that it just got to take a better stance uh, militarily and just start attacking more. So it's going to be a lot more deaths in Russia. This is all from um, the Moscow Times. The article reads, for the first, first the country, then life. The state Duma uh, criticizes Russians for their reluctancy to die, their reluctance to die. So also you have Qatari officials say Jays are murderers of prophets. October 7 is only a prelude. All right. So Qatar is getting involved with it. So this is unraveling into the situation, which is going to be um, in the scriptures called um, the time of Armageddon, which is uh, Yahweh's um Hamagadwa Valley of Troops, where all the troops of these nations is going to meet up in World War Three, which is in the territory known as uh, the Fertile Crescent today. All right. So we getting ahead and ready for those times. And what we do now is we consider what the Lord said concerning plagues, pestilences and terror. Right. Matthew 10 and 34 says, think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. And through Matthew 24, we recognize the signs that the Lord gave of his coming when he would return. And what he returns means peace only after the sword is, is brought. Because Yahweh Shah is going to fulfill the prophecies of the elect being um, redeemed. He is going to fulfill the prophecies of uh, kingdom of heaven on earth he is going to fulfill the prophecies where you know the lion and the lamb the child shall lay down next to asps and and then you know and and uh, uh, you know impurities and, and evil being blotted out and righteousness uh flourishing he is going to bring about the, that change all right but that is not up and uh, that is not any sooner than he brings about that sword and that sword is devastation all right. So when you go into Revelation, it tells you Yahweh Shah, you know, opened the seals and the seals involved with the seals. What was revealed was that there was lamentation, mourning and woe that was about to be poured out in judgment. That's about to come from the uh, heavenly father upon the earth. Woe, right? Third woe is coming quickly. So that third woe is war. So what are we to do? How are we to behave? Well, the scripture said, John 8, 15 and 18, it says, if the world hates you. You know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would have loved his own. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. So the hatred that we receive is really directed at Yahweh Shah because he received it first. He says, remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you if they kept my saying. Uh, they will keep yours also. So the persecution comes because Yahweh Shah, we are servants of him and the servant isn't greater. So you have to go through the same uh, um, dealings or the same hatred that the Lord will be shown to the Lord. Yahweh Shah will be shown unto us. So that means even unto death for some. So we have to just bear, you know, gird our loins like a man and, and bear our crosses because we are being subject unto that burden that, you know, just as Yahweh Shah was being subject to his burden. So we all have to go in the lot of our, you know, our, our, our master, so to speak, and deal with our burdens and carry the cross with Yahweh Shah. Are you going to let Yahweh Shah carry that cross alone or are you going to go ahead and carry that cross with, with them like Joseph and Arimathea did? He says, but all these things that will do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. There it is. They have no knowledge of the one who um, sent Yahweh Shah, nor do they have knowledge of who we are sent by. They think we're just crazy lunatics, right? Acts 9 and 16, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So altogether, you know, the part of this prophecy and part of this training and this teaching we go through and we teach, brothers, is that you got to have a solid foundation. You know, when 
fear and trembling come, you know, you have to uh, have patience, all right? You have to endure. You have to go through the hard times and the trials of our faith so that you could be made firm and that you can come out uh, pure, right? Just like a fire purifies the um, different various metals, precious metals, and gets the dross out. So Yahweh is doing, you know, the Father is doing that, and we accept that um, with pleasure as we become purged and purified. All right, so we're doing it for Yahweh's name's sake. All right, all right, which is a selfless act because you're doing it for Yahweh's So you know, a power greater than us that's able to deliver us in the time of trouble. So there's a reason why we're doing it. There's a reward that comes with it. The Lord is not quick to forget um, our labor of love. This is Acts 10, 14, 22, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Uh, and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of Yahweh. So it happens with much tribulation. I mean, you're going to go through trouble after trouble, anguish after anguish, persecution after persecution. This is the dealings. And then much more evil is going to come. The time of Jacob's trouble is here, in which like you just went through the time of Armageddon, the time of the Lord's decision, the time of the Valley Jehoshaphat, the time of uh, troubles, uh, the time of the Yahweh bringing fire. You see, it's all accumulating into evil times ahead. So this is why we're using this time to do our diligent uh, uh, you know, work and, and carry that cross and do our labor of love by exhorting those to continue because they're going to want to be uprooted. You know, and when you're new and you're just taking a new seed that's just planted, it doesn't have the strong foundation and the roots that a tree that's been there for years as it starts out of seedling, and we all did, so we have to um, confirm and 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 make them stronger, and you know, uh, you know, it's similar to the watering the plants so that they can grow roots stronger. All right, you got to protect, you got to take care of the flock. This is Acts twenty, verse twenty-two. It says, and now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Yahweh, unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there. Why? Because different cities or different places in which the prophets, you know, Yahweh, and, and anyone who's in the stead of Yahweh, anyone who's servant to the master, Yahweh, has to deal with persecution in various forms. Paul is saying here, you know, where I go now, um, um, I know, you know, I don't know the things that shall um, befall me there, meaning I don't know what's going to happen to me there, but I know it's danger. He says, save that the Holy Spirit witnesseth in every city. So I have to go. He says, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. All right. So to be abided by bonds and affliction, what he means is in the NLT, except the Holy Spirit tells me in city, tells me in city after city that jail and suffering lie ahead. So the persecution continues. Yahushua, you know, he, he, was he not in bonds and in straits? All right, before his crucifixion, he was, he was in jail. They were sending him to Herod. Herod was sending him to uh, uh, back to Pontius. They were making mockery of Yahushua. So Yahushua had to deal with that persecution. And that's foretold in the scriptures that we won't have to deal with that as well. Paul said jail and suffering lie ahead. So understand, Akim, this is a fight. To the end, you know, we are being persecuted, but be, keep your head up and um, understanding how Shah walked the same persecution and he was not left aside, meaning, you know, Yahweh Shah is on the right hand side of, of the Father Yahweh right now, awaiting his throne and kingdom. This is first Second Timothy three, verse twelve. I'm gonna start at ten. It says, But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured, but of, of out of them all, the Lord delivered me. So deliverance is for those who deal with the persecution straight on, you know, and it, and it causes growth, it causes patience, it causes you to become harder and, and endure because it causes you to uh, grow in your faith, in your understanding, in your wisdom, and make you walk worthy of your calling. So, you know, because those that can't be persecuted, they really weren't true to this thing. It says, Yea, and all that live godly in Yahweh shall suffer persecution. And this goes over a lot of people's heads because they'd rather not hear the persecution. 
So when the persecution finally comes, they shake, rattle, and roll their way up out of it. Like a snake wither their way up out of it. Like a weasel. But we understand the scriptures say when persecution comes upon you, um, you know, hold on. Or basically, uh, you know, when, when, when you are brought to a lower state, be patient. And so we understand now this is just things that has to happen. It's been prophesied to happen. Moving on. 1 Corinthians 4 and 11. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands. But reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it, being defamed, we entreat. We are made as a filth of the world and are as and are the off scoring of all things unto this day. Meaning we're the trash, we're the filth, we're the, you know, we're, we're, you know, we hunger, we thirst, you know, buffeted, you know, reviled. You know, we just have to have a, like, you know, it says honorable way about us. Um, you know, continue on in the things you will learn. And and not just when the persecution come upon you, you find trying to find a way out of it, but you just deal with it. You know, it, it allows you to bring humility to a situation where everyone else is walking on in pride. <clears throat> Second Corinthians six and four says, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of the house, I minister to me serving. So we are the servants of the Lord. If you don't feel like you actually a servant or serving, then how can you be a servant? So a servant is lowly, a servant is humble, a servant is at the call of other others. And so the Lord has set up even men above us to make calls for us so that we have to serve our side through men. And that's even a stumbling block for many that said to themselves, only God can judge me and I don't got to serve nobody and I only serve God. It's like a woman saying, I I'm married to Jesus, you know, right? And she misses the whole idea of servitude or she, what's her purpose, all right? Well, as the women of Yahweh, you know, because we are brides, maids and brides for waiting or waiting for the bridegroom to return, we have jobs to do. All right, we have to stay loyal and faithful to our calling to make it in our election sure, right? It says, but in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of Yahweh, in much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by law, by love and fame, by the word of truth, by the power of Yahweh, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand of and on the left. By honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, is deceivers and yet true. All right. It says, and unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, yet as having nothing, and yet possessing all things. And so you can see now, it's just you're constantly troubled, you're constantly in anguish, you're constantly um, uh, suffering. And that's the that's the idea of bringing about pureness, bringing about this truth. We are sacrificing all of these things, our comfortability, our um, feeling good all the time, you know, our desire to live out our childhood dreams. We're sacrificing all these things. Um, people looking at us and feeling warm and fuzzy about us and feeling good about us and making us feel good. Well, we're sacrificing all those things. And in patience, the Lord gives us that fame. In patience, well, if we endure, we'll get all of those 10,000, you know, a thousand times back, a hundred times back over, as the Lord stated. All right. So we're showing our uh, fear to the Lord. And we're also showing our service to the Lord by going through all of these sad things. This is Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that said they were on to take peace from the earth so we understand we ain't coming into a time of terrible trouble and that's what the idea is see we're slowly getting used to dealing with pain dealing with suffering dealing with persecutions dealing with troubles so when the real trouble and the real pain that's going to have everybody perplexed comes we're going to have a head start on understanding and dealing with pain and dealing with situations having situational awareness and understanding that how is i delivered us out of all these times how much more now because we were patient and persecuted while it wasn't cool. While before, you know, the evil days drew nigh. While you could still shop till you drop, right? While everybody else was partying, BS, and getting married, and married, right? Figuratively, what were we doing? Building our ark. And once the ark was built, Noah entered into the ark and closed the door. And then the floods came. Then they started to beat on the ark. So 
of course, knowledge, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And obviously, it's this persecution that's allowing us to uh, prove ourselves to Yahweh and Shah on that day. You see, last scripture, Revelation 13. As a matter of fact, let me finish. And they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So Esau, Edom got that sword. He's not going to use it in vain. Uh, last scripture, Revelation 7, 13. So I can, and I'm going to start at 15. It says, and he had power to give life unto the beast, image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And that image of the beast is going into how um, NATO and the EU got power to give uh, that ancient Roman Empire life again, right? Through its same customs, through its same practices, through the same people ruling again. That 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 beast, all right. Just like the first beast, the first image of the beast, uh, Rome is come back all over again through NATO, EU, and America, and so now it's causing all to serve it and worship it, and their way of causing you to worship it is by taking the MOTB, which is prophesied in verse uh, uh, sixteen on down of the same chapter. So. We understand that the MOTB is coming. We understand that those who don't take it will um, um, not be able to uh, buy and sell and your commerce, your life, pretty much your resources will be uh, halted for, for a season until the Lord just comes through for all of his elect by feeding us however which way he sees the fit. But we understand the ramifications of taking this MOTB, which is going to be thermonical of fire, you see. According to Revelations, the 14th chapter, we understand what the MOTB is. It's a C-hip, our implantable uh, C-hip that couldn't go into your um, your hand or your forehead, all right? Through a brain C-hip. So we understand we can see the signs of Yahweh Shai. And we understand now serving our Lord right now, dealing with the tribulation right now, uh, carrying your cross right now, just like it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't uh, something that everyone jumped on during the time of Yahweh Shai carrying his cross. Only Joseph of Arimathea jumped out there to do it. But his name is recorded forevermore. All right. And that lot is a precious lot. All right. In the eyes of the elect, right to this day, you help Yahweh Shai with his cross. Well, that's what we all strive to do. Help Yahweh Shai with his cross. All right. Help him with his cross. Do this work. And whatever tribulation comes, just deal with it. Just deal with it. All right. Fight the good fight of faith. Right. All right. Gird up your loins like a man. All right. Confirm the souls. Not only do you just deal with it, but you be deal with it so well that you could teach others to deal with it as well. Right. That's what making uh, strong the feeble knees is all about. That's what feeding the flock is all about. Making sure you show up to the game daily, making sure you are right. You know, whatever you got to do, if you got to, you know, if you got to watch a movie to get back right, if you got to uh, play on the video games to get back right, whatever you got to do to get back right, that should be the goal isn't to relax. The goal is to get back into the situation, have complete situational awareness of what you're dealing with. You're dealing with end times. This is the real deal. This is not the precursor. This is not the. You know, you really in life right now. It's time to straighten up, you know, and understand the seriousness of what you're doing and the ramifications if you don't do it well. The scripture says, walk worthy of your calling and your vocation. Okay? So understand this is the job has to be done specifically, just like the temple had to be built specifically. Well, this job got to be done specifically to the Lord's liking, not to our own liking. To the Lord's liking that is way above our own liking. That is way above what we what we have as our own standards. Our standards are, are beneath the Lord's standards. He right, His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. So we got to live up to what the expectations of the words of the Lord says. So using diligence to make it call an, an election sure. Fighting the good fight of faith because you want to go back in the world. You want to get weak. You want to do all these things. But you not only not only do you have to fight for yourself, but you are an example. And those that follow you need to be uh, uh, girded up and built up and 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 then uh, um, uh, helped out too. So understand this is this is a cross we are carrying at this point in time. Do not drop it. Hold on to it and fight that good fight. You know, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And pray without ceasing. And fast if needed. Shalom. Yahweh Shemesh. Shalom. Edifying. Till next time. Shalom.